Okay, this is the uh, chapter three practice test, and the first uh, problem was an uh, implicit differentiation uh, problem. So all we have to do is uh, take the derivative with respect to x dy dx. In other words, we wanted to find dy dx. So we have two times x y. So we kind of separate. I, like I said before, pull the two out, two out here. All right, and we have two times, and then the first times, and we have to use the pro, uh, product rule here, and do that implicitly. So that would be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, okay? So the first is going to be x times the derivative of the second, which is going to be dy dx, all right? So the first is x, and the derivative of the second is 1 dy dx, plus the second, which is y, times the derivative of the first, which is dx dx, and then it's all preceded by a 2. Then we have to take the derivative of this, which is going to be 2y dy dx equals the derivative of x is 1 dx dx, or just 1, and the derivative of y is just 1 dy dx. And we'll just group all of our dy terms on the left, so I have the, well, first of all, I multiplied here, excuse me, 2x dy dx plus 2y dy dx, just 2y, just multiply 2 times that, then plus I have a 2y dy dx, and that equals a 1 plus dy dx. Then I'll get all my dy dx terms on the left, so I'll subtract this from both sides, and I'll subtract the 2y from both sides. So I've got all my dy dx terms, all three of them on the left, and everything else on the right. Then I'll factor out the dy dx, and what's left in the first term is 2x plus 2y minus 1 equals 1 plus 1 minus 2y, excuse me, 1 minus 2y. Then I'll just divide both sides by this trinomial, 2x plus 2y minus 1, and that's what we have. So that was the first one. Um, the next one, we wanted to find the derivative, and it says find dy dx, and uh, it's, uh, this is number 2, I guess I could do right over here. y equals the arc. Let's get up here a little bit here. There we go. y equals the arc cotangent of x squared. Remember the derivative of our, our cotangent. If you look on your cards, your flashcards, you got them there somewhere. Those are your formulas. Remember now. Remember the formulas don't, aren't in terms of the of the chain rule, so you have to kind of should have had this out. Sorry about this. But what's the derivative of the arc cotangent? Negative one. So just like the tangent, but only negative one. Where's that pesky formula anyway? I'm just going to show it to you just so. There we go, that's it. So there's the arc cotangent, negative 1 over 1 plus x squared, except we have the chain rule, so we have to remember that. So the arc cotangent is negative 1 over 1 plus x squared, so that'd be u squared times du dx. We have to take that, and because in this case the u is going to be what? x squared. So what's the du dx? The u dx will be 2x. So y prime equals negative 1 all over 1 plus u squared times the du dx, which is the 2x. And the u squared is x squared. So that's just going to equal negative 1. I'm sorry, we'll put the 2x on top, so negative 2x. And in the bottom we've got 1 plus, and what's x squared squared? x to the fourth. And that's y prime. That's all you have to do with that. Negative, and you can put the negative in, on the top, or you could write... Well, our book always likes to write, put the negative in front of the fraction, and they have got 2x all over 1 plus x to the fourth. So that's not too bad. Okay. And then number three, this is a real nice one. Number three, we just have to find uh, both derivatives, and uh, we could actually work that out over here on the test. If we look at this, our first derivative, y prime. So you can see that better. Y prime equals, and this is going to be what? 8x to the third. Okay, minus 12x squared. Minus 6x plus 1. So that's y prime, so that should be pretty easy. And then y double prime, that's the second derivative. That's what this is, so that's y double prime. That equals the derivative of this would be just be 28, 3 times 8 is 24x minus 
or that's x squared, pardon me, and minus 24x, and minus 6. So there you go. So that's not too bad. You can work that out just like that. So those are almost freebies. And then number uh, four, we have one of these uh, using numerical values here. So we can have to just check out the uh, product rule and the quotient rule. And we've done these, plenty of these. So the first one is going to be the derivative. Let me remove this here. So the derivative of 4 times uh, u times v. So again, we just put the 4 outside and we use the product rule. Uh, first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first or u v prime plus v u prime. And then we, we just substitute the values that we were given. So be very careful because uh, sometimes some of the errors are made. We just don't substitute correctly. So, so watch out so that, that you get this because this can actually carry over to the next problem. So you can get a double dip for this if you're not careful, all right? So I look over here and it says u is 1, v prime is 4, uh, u, uh, v is negative 7, and u prime is 3. And then we just simplify this out, so we got 4 times, and this is going to be 4, minus 21. So 4 negative 21 is negative 17, 4 times negative 17 is negative, 17 and 17 is 34, 34 and 34 is 68. And then the uh, second part of this number four was just to uh, use the um, quotient rule. So low d high, less high d low, denominator squared below. Low d high, or v u prime, less u v prime, v squared on the bottom. Now the nice thing about this is if we look at this, we've got this right over here. Uh, v u prime, uh, v, v u prime, so that's over here, so that would be this one. So you can just put that in there. You can also double check it to make sure it checks out. And then u v prime, u v prime is right over there, 1 times 4, and all over v squared, negative 7 squared, so that's going to be negative 21, and negative 4 is negative 25, all over 49. Okay, so that's not too bad. And we'll try one more here, number five. And number five was our particle motion problem. And, and you know, it always surprises me when people do make errors on these because this is a pretty straightforward problem. We haven't done anything too exotic with these, so everybody should be able to nail these. Uh, first one is the displacement, and the displacement is just S, S of five. That they want the displacement. Um, find the displacement during the first... Five seconds. Now remember, your, your, if you look at your practice test, the S of t is negative 14 t squared plus 30 t plus 80. So we want, just want the displacement in the first five seconds. Well, this is, uh, that's basically how far we've moved in from my zero position to my position at five. So it's just S of five minus S of zero. So how far have I moved? So I just find my position at five and subtract my position at zero, and I'm a displacement. That's how much I moved. So you just put that in the position function. So that was negative 14, so that's a little small. I kind of squished this in here, but this negative 14 times 5 squared plus 30 times 5 plus 80. And that would be S of 5 minus S of 0, which is just negative 14, 0 squared plus 30 times 0 plus 80. Okay, what's 5 squared? 25. What's 30 times 5? 150 plus 80. This is 0, that's 0, and this is 80, so minus 80. So these 80s are cancel. Okay, what's 14 times 25? Well, every 425 makes 100. So 12 would be 300, and another 2 would be 350. So that's negative 350 plus 150. These 80s cancel. So 150 from 350 is negative 200. So I had negative 200. So that was my displacement, and that would be in feet. Now they want to find the average velocity. Well, that's the same thing as the average rate of change. That's what velocity is. All right, so that's like our, you know, f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. So we're, we're actually just using the change in distance over the change in time. The change in distance is our, my displacement. So I already have that. It's right there. My change of time was from 0 seconds to 5 seconds, so that's a change of time of 5 seconds. So that's my 
change in y over the change in x. If we grab, plot this on a, you know, s, t axis. So negative 200 over 5 is negative. 5 goes into 20. 4 times 40 is 0, 40. So that's not too bad. Okay, then we want to find the um, instantaneous velocity at 2 seconds. So remember the velocity is just the derivative of the position function. So my, this was my position function I wrote over here again. And if I take the derivative of that, remember the derivative of the position function is the velocity. Then that's going to be 2 times negative 14 is negative 28t plus 30. And we want that at 2, so I just put 2 in here. So negative 28 times 2 is negative 56 plus 30 is negative 26, and that again would be feet per second. Feet per second, feet per second. So you should write the units in. Negative 200 feet. Okay, and this would be negative 40 feet per second, and this would be negative 26 feet per second. And then we want the acceleration uh, when, when t is 2. Well, if we take the derivative of the velocity, we get negative 28, and that's the acceleration no matter what t is, so that would be negative 28, and that would be feet per second squared. And the last one, they want to know um, at what value or values of t does a particle change direction? Well, it changes direction when the velocity stops, of course. So we can change direction. So I just let set the velocity equal to zero. And when we do that, I would just add the 28 to both sides, divide by 28. So t equals uh, 30 over 28. If I can reduce that, that would be 15 over 14 seconds. And that's all. So those should be pretty straightforward. Hopefully that won't be a problem.